it's it's raining <laughs> it's ra this month has been terrible look i love to surf fish but the surf has been chopped up it's been crazy there's been thunderstorms there's been riptides and it's hard to catch fish in the summer anyway in the surf they kind of slow down but that's not the only place to fish in oak island no where sands the backwaters you can go oh i don't have a boat how am i gonna get back there hey you don't need an expensive boat you can get a kayak kayaks they cost a lot of money now you know, go to walmart get a cheap one mine costs like a hundred dollars and i'm catching fish in the backwaters want to find out how to kayak fish in oak island come on let's go <laughs> Before we start talking about kayaking, I just want to tell you a few weeks ago, I took a trip across the ICW to um, Sunset Harbor, and this is the pier at Sunset Harbor looking across the ICW to Oak Island, and I went there because I was invited to do a presentation on surf fishing for the Brunswick County Fishing Club. Now, if you've never been over there, they've got a great little fishing club, a great, this is the building, great little fishing camp, and they host events there, they have tournaments, they have guest speakers like I was, and it's just a really nice facility, but more than better than that, they're just a great group of guys, so if you're interested in joining, it's only only $15 a year and only $8 for kids. So I did my presentation. They have other people come doing presentations. It's just a really cool deal. And they even have a piano. So how can you top it? Wow. <laughs> All right, people, don't worry. I promise not to quit my day job. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the fish you can catch in the backwaters here on Oak Island. To start with, there are croaker out there. They're the easiest thing to catch and there's definitely plenty of them and you can actually get some pretty decent sized croaker if, you, if you're targeting them. Black drum are out there, good fighting fish. I also like to eat them, they're pretty good. Uh, along with that, there's speckled trout out there, especially catch them in the morning bite. Along with speckled trout, you'll catch the occasional red drum, mostly puppy drums, but sometimes you'll get a slot one out there, not too bad. And yes, the flounder can be caught in the backwaters. I'm sorry, the making of this video flounder are out of season. Sorry, kids, but you know the deal. They'll be back in season soon, though. If you want to just catch a fish, the easiest way to do it for a croaker or a black drum is get yourself a double drop rig, a little maybe two ounce pyramid weight, and some one out hooks, and you're going to be good to go. On those hooks, put a little piece of a shrimp. Fresh shrimp is going to be better. Just a little cut piece of shrimp on either of those two hooks. You'll be catching croaker all day long and occasionally run into a black drum. If you want to target black drum, get yourself some fiddler crabs. You can buy them at Dutchman's Creek or you can just go down to the, the point and catch them yourself. Black drum, love them. So if you want to catch some of the other fish, your speckled trout, your red drum, the flounder, you're going to be using a little bit different tactics, stepping up your game a little bit. What I would suggest to start with, what, I, what I'm using in this video, is I got a jig head and I put a soft plastic on it. Soft plastics come in all different shapes and sizes. This one here with a whirly swirly tail. You can get the paddle tails. You can even get voodoo shrimp, artificial shrimp that are in soft plastics. And you'll catch all three of these fish on soft plastics. Now another good option is if you like live bait, get some live shrimp. Put them on a floating cork or a popping cork, float them past the docks, and if there's a red drum under there or some speckled trout around, they're definitely going to come out and hit that live shrimp. Now, the croaker is still going to hit your live shrimp, so if you're buying them, it can be an expensive prospect, but a good one at that because you can catch a lot of different fish with them. The third option is get yourself some live minnows. Mud minnows or finger mullet are going to work really well. Put them on a Carolina rig, and again, just fish them out there by the grass, uh, under the docks, and you're going you're gonna to have another good option for you. All right, let's get out and start kayak fishing. The first place you can go and where I'm going to start is the Davis Canal. Now, you can put in the Davis Canal at the rec center, which is located right here where this little red circle is. And uh, it's at 31st Street East. And you can launch your kayak there. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to basically paddle down the Davis Canal. I'm actually going to go all the way down to 15th Street. And then I'm going to leave my truck there at 31st Street. And I'm going to bike back up and get my truck later on. First thing I'm going to do, put on my personal flotation device. This way, if I ever fall out of the kayak, I can float away safely. I'm also going to put on my hat because, hey, sunburn. So let's put on a hat and be safe here. Now, uh, right here, there's kind of a place you've got to drag your kayak. And I had to drag my kayak. I tried to keep it on the grass here so as not to scrape the bottom. And down the little wooden pier where this guy was fishing. And he probably wasn't too happy because I was probably startling all his fish. But at the rec center, they have this very cool kayak launch and you put your kayak in it and you can get into your kayak real simple without tipping or anything like that because it's very stable and then it has these handrails 
you grab the handrails and you just kind of pull yourself in. So I loaded up my kayak. I actually forgot my fishing rods. I had to go back and get them. So I actually left it sitting there. I went back and got my fishing rods, came back, and it was still there. No one stole my $100 kayak, which is cool. <laughs> uh, anyway, grabbed those handrails and I just pulled myself and the kayak just eased itself into the water and started floating. And I was like, this is great. They should have one of these all over the place. Every place should have one of these easy to launch kayak systems. Then I just started paddling. Now I'm up at 31st Street. I'm going to be heading west down the Davis Canal. I had never been up this far in the Davis Canal and really didn't know what to expect. I decided I was going to bring two baits with me. Uh, first, a paddle tail. Whenever I bring a soft plastic like this and I'm just kind of paddling along trying to find a place to fish, I will troll with it behind me. So I'll basically cast it out and even though I'm paddling, it's trolling behind me and I sometimes will catch a fish doing that and of course it doesn't, doesn't hurt to do it. So there you go, like that. I just have it just dragging behind the boat so I'm paddling along now this part of the Davis Canal was kind of almost a little creepy it's very narrow there are a lot of trees like this very precariously located tree which I thought was going to fall on me when I went under it very quickly to get away from it and the rest of the Davis Canal up in this part looks sort of like something out of Jurassic Park like I'm waiting for like a herd of stegosaurus to run across the canal here so I did not do a lot of fishing in this section instead I just kind of floated until I got here which I think was about 20th east so i've probably gone down about 10 blocks and there was this overpass kind of walkway above and there was this creek coming out on the left side and when i noticed that creek coming out and the water coming out of the marsh i thought this is going to be a really good place to fish there's going to be water coming out of that marsh there's going to be fish sitting in the davis canal waiting for whatever's getting pulled out of the marsh so i set up with my two baits i had my paddle tail which i was throwing and i also had just some some shrimp on a double drop rig and i caught my first fish so here it is in the davis canal uh, it is a croaker. Yay! <laughs> if you like croaker, I caught one. But it, it proved the point that there were going to be fish setting up there, and it wasn't long to have my second fish coming out of there, which gave a little bit better of a tug. So I thought this is probably a little bit better of a fish. And I was right, a little black drum. So I love black drum. This one, of course, was a little small. I didn't catch anything there with the paddle tails, but maybe if I'd sat there a little bit longer, I, I might have, but I was like, ah, I want to move on. I want to see what other kind of spots are in this Davis Canal where else would be fishing. So I pull up the anchor and headed downstream. Now I say downstream because uh, the tide was falling. I got there at about the top of the rising tide and was just letting the tide carry me down. And I let it carry me down a good long ways. I got all the way to the Middleton Bridge. And when I got to the Middleton Bridge, I thought this is another good spot to set up. Uh, because you have the bridge, and on the side of the bridge, there are a lot of uh, oysters, barnacles, all that kind of stuff. And on the side, there was tall grass with a lot of fiddler crabs. So I thought, this is going to be a good place to set up. Let me fish here. Though it was a little creepy under the bridge. I was like, are there trolls under here? I'm not sure. I thought to get on the other side, since the water was flowing out, if I got under the bridge and the water was flowing out, I might do better. And I had a couple of hits there, but then the, nothing really bit, nothing took. I think it was just a little pinfish. So I just kept going, and I went all the way down to about 15th Street, now West End, uh, where it, the Davis Canal actually started to open up a little bit, which was kind of nice. It was like it had been all trees on both sides and almost this creepy little thing. Now it opened up to the areas I like. Uh, big marsh, grassy areas, not so many trees you can see there, and a lot of oyster beds. Now the tide was getting really low at this point, so I sat up in front of one of those oyster beds. Those rocks in front of me there, those are just all oysters. So I sat up there, water coming out of the marsh, just like with that little stream up further, and again, fishing with the paddle tail and the shrimp, and the shrimp was working, of course, again, really well. But you know, <laughs> you're know, you always going to catch croaker in the Davis Canal. You're just always going to have to deal with that. Um, and so I did. And th But they were pretty decent sized croaker. I mean, if you like to eat croaker, you probably could catch some pretty big ones in the Davis Canal. So I just kept uh, fishing that area, hoping I was going to get a nice black drum. But unfortunately, I was not able to do that. I was able to catch, yay, another croaker. <laughs> and I caught more than this. I caught several croaker. But uh, you don't need to watch me catching croaker after croaker after croaker. So I didn't just use the shrimp. I did, in between catching croaker, throw the paddle tails. And as I was throwing the paddle tails, I actually got kind of lucky with a hit right here. And I pulled this bad boy into the boat and let me tell you something exciting but not exciting because they're uh, the making of this video out of season so even though this was a beautiful flounder uh, i had to release him and that was about the end of my excursion at this point i had to start heading back to go to go get my truck 
Now, as I had mentioned, I had left my truck at 30th Street, so now I had to get out, get on my bike, and I had to start pedaling all the way back to 30th Street on my bike so I could get back to my truck. The bike ride is like 30 blocks. No, it's 30 blocks from Middleton. Uh, it's like twice that. Uh. I should get a motorcycle. Gotta put that in the back of the truck. Now, between my fishing kayak excursions, I convinced Kim to go with me to Varnum Town to get some fresh seafood. Now, if you're not familiar with Varnum Town, it's all the way on the other side of the Lockwoods Folly River. I had to go all the way up to 17, cut across Stone Chimney Road, drive back down. A good half an hour from Oak Island, but worth the trip. Now, Varnum Town is an old fishing community. They shrimp there, they oyster, they clam, and they used to make the shrimp boats there and the nets and everything. Unfortunately, it's becoming sort of a lost art at this point because most of the shrimpers that work there are older and their children are going off to school and doing other things instead of becoming shrimp boat captains. But right now, for the time being, they still do it. And if you want fresh shrimp, you're going to get it there. So we went to um, Garland's, it's called, but it's actually called Honey's Place, if you want to know the truth. So go to Honey's Place. And as soon as we walked in, there was a gentleman there and he was like, I want some shrimp. And I was like, yeah, sure. So he got a bag and he started filling it up. I, he said, how much do you want? I said, a pound. He put exactly a pound of shrimp in my bag when he threw it up on the scale. It was exactly a pound. I was amazed. But this is definitely going to be the best shrimp uh, I probably have ever had because I know it's fresh. <laughs> they just got it off the boat. So there it goes. They also had a freezer full of, they had these stuffed crabs that they must have stuffed themselves and then they froze and I was like yeah we'll take a couple of those as well so that looked really exciting we're gonna have a really good um, Kim's gonna make shrimp and grits which I'm not a big shrimp and grits fan so we'll see what she can do but uh, just really cool to be able to get out there and get up and close and personal with the, the boats themselves and look at the nets and just a crazy look back at history Middleton, halfway there. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Whose idea was this? Oh, I'll probably get my car. The worst part is, I left my phone in the truck. You know, my wife's called me like 20 times and I didn't answer in the two hours I was out fishing because I didn't have my phone with me. She's gonna think I'm dead. All right, ready for kayak excursion number two. We are going to leave at 57th Street. Uh, it's on the West End. It's the old Blue Water Point Marina. Used to be the hotel there. The Fish House restaurant was there, which is now the Lone Rider. And it's a great place to launch from because you got several options. Number one, you can go out behind Sheep Island and you can fish there. Lots of marsh grass, lots of oyster beds. Or you could hang a right and go up Montgomery Slough. Great fishing up there. And you can actually circle around and come back down Davis. So you get a little both going on. Or if you feel really adventurous, you could cut across the ICW and go fish Lockwood Folly River. And lots of good fishing up there. You could even go all up to Varnum Town if you want. So lots of options with this boat launch right here. Now it is a boat launch. So I should say that there are two uh, ramps there. So I'm just going to get my kayak out and put it in the no fancy, <laughs> no fancy kayak launch like we had at the rec center. This would just put it in the ramp and there could be other boats launching right next to you. Of course, I take my personal safety device with me again, my personal flotation device. So if I fall out, I can float away. And then I, I just kind of launched it out of the, the little boat ramp there and just started paddling out and just started to decide I'm going to head out towards some of that grass and some of that. Look for a good spot out there, find some of those oyster beds and start fishing. Now, like before, I'm going to do the same uh, gear with me. I'm bringing the same rigs. I'm bringing a paddle tail here and a nice sparkly paddle tail, which of course I'm going to troll as I'm heading out to find a spot. And I'm also going to bring some shrimp on the double drop rig. So we're targeting all those fish I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Now, when I say I'm looking for a fishing spot, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm looking for places that look fishy, right? I'm looking for grass. I'm looking for oyster beds, places that fish are going to hang out. But in this situation, what I noticed was that the wind, both the wind and the current, were pushing the water up against this area of grass, right, where I was just fishing. And what I figured is the little bait fish and things in the water are going to get pushed up against that grass as well. I mean, you can see the water kind of moving right towards it. So I decided I'm going to drop my bait right near in front of that grass because the bigger fish are going to be sitting there waiting for things to get pushed in. And 
and I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> My first cast, I dropped the uh, shrimp right there, and this big black drum just happened to be sitting there doing exactly what I thought he'd be doing, waiting for some piece of shrimp to get floated past him. And he took the hook, and I caught him, and, uh, and he was a keeper. He was about 16 inches, but I was feeling very benevolent, so I decided to let him go and let some other kayaker, kayaker come out here and catch him at a, at a later date. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for in those areas, and this place proved to be, you know, pretty prosperous. I ended up catching this big oyster shell here, <laughs> but you know what? They're out of season as well as the flounder I caught earlier. Uh, you can only harvest oysters during our months. I didn't know that. It's something I learned recently. So uh, you can harvest them in October, starting in October, because there's an R in October, and you can um, harvest them through till March because there's an R in March. And after that, you're not supposed to harvest them on any months that don't have an R in it. So I uh, was fishing a little bit more. Now I had also the paddle tail, as I mentioned. So I started throwing the paddle tail to see what I could catch. And lo and behold, I caught another one of the uh, endangered or extinct uh, flounder. <laughs> uh, I just kid, I kid. But, you know, we're not allowed to catch them, keep them. We're not allowed to keep them right now, even though this would be a keeper. He's a nice sized little flounder right there. Now, this guy did decide to, like, basically swallow my paddle tail. So I had to go in there and, and get it out. <laughs> and after, after I was done, he had pretty much done a good job on that paddle tail. So I did release him and he swam off strong, but I was definitely going to need a new paddle tail. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, while I was reeling him in, I had the, the bait sitting out from my double drop rig. So I, I actually had a hit on that and it kind of had to wait. So this is exactly after I released that flounder. I pulled this up and I had doubled up on the croaker, but they, they were just sitting out there on the hooks for a few minutes. Uh, but I got them off the hooks and threw them back in uh, rather quickly, but it's kind of funny. So anyway, back to my paddle tail. I had a nice little white one, a little jig head here. So I'm going to throw this little paddle tail on the jig head. I, You know, and I only brought two paddle tails with me, which was kind of ridiculous because I didn't realize how chewed up they would get. I caught the second fish and he did some damage on my paddle tail as well. So a word of advice, bring more than two paddle tails if you decide to go out and do this. Because once this one was gone, I, I basically was just left to shrimp. Um, so, but I, I thought this was going to be a trout. I pulled him up and I'm like, wow, I got a trout. And then I got him into the kayak and I was like, this is not a trout at all. This is a lizard fish and a decent sized lizard fish too. Now I've heard you can eat these things. I'm not going to do it. All I wanted was my paddle tail back and he wouldn't let go. And I don't mean just the hook part. I got the hook out of him and then he was like holding onto the tail and I'm like, let go. He's stuck on his teeth. So I finally got, I finally got it out and, and I measured him just to see how big it was. Like, I'm going to keep it. Like it's a keeper. <laughs> what size are the regulations on these things? I think, uh, I think they're good to go. Anyway, I was generous with him. I threw him back. So you guys can get out there and catch him. I got another bite right after that. And this one just took out my paddle tail. And as I mentioned, that was the end of all my paddle tails. So at this point, I decided to paddle back to 57th Street. Um, and while doing so, I actually hit my uh, paddle on the bottom of the uh, oyster bed. And that, <laughs> so that's ruined. I have to get a new one of those. Coming up on 15th Street. Right down there. Some trucks today. And uh, here it is, 15th Street. So that's 75 cents there, 75 cents. First I was a quarter, midway I was 50 cent. What's a 50 cent song go? Oh, in the club, oh, oh, rub a dub dub, something like that. Pretty good, getting the hang of it. So now I'm like 75 cent there. <sighs> I'm not doing this one again. I was just wondering, hope I got my key. Oh yeah, <laughs> my pocket. <laughs> That'd be bad. <laughs> you know what? Grits, I just put the grits in. We're gonna do 20 minutes on these. What kind of grits are they? Stone ground, you gotta get stone ground. Stone ground Steve Austin? Don't know who that is. She's got a lot of stuff going on here. I'm just gonna point out, we got some heavy cream, got some fish stock, I think it's tomato paste, some like chives. She's got another thing of butter, pepper, definitely garlic, parsley maybe. We got some chopped tomato, fake hot sauce, oh, Jimmy Cricket, Worcestershire sauce, bacon already chopped up and good to go. Mm. And then this is the shrimp we got from Varmtown. So somehow 
all these ingredients are going to magically come together. That's a lot of ingredients for for shrimp grits. Started filming. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to melt a bunch of butter. Butter. Yum, yum, special yum, yum, butter. Yum. Last time it was like Irish butter, some special butter. You used. It's as long as it's real butter. It's not like margarine. Mm -mm. You're good. Okay. I mean, I definitely have preferences on my butter, but. For this recipe, you don't have to go crazy. Garlic's going in? Yep. Ready for the garlic? Garlic's going in. I feel like you were going to sneak that in, you weren't even going to tell me. Nope. I don't feel like your spoon in. fits in the garlic bowl. The garlic is in the bowl. The garlic is in the building. I'm going to add my chopped tomatoes. All the chopped tomatoes are all in there. You saw those in the room doing this earlier. That was good. That was good. Can you smell through the Yeah, I'm gonna add um, some cooked bacon. This was not in my recipe, but I'm implement like I'm just kinda what do you I mean feel it wasn't like in every, your recipe? everything's better with bacon. That's what the lady said. <laughs> Wait, well what's that? Hold on. Flour. We didn't have flour. There was no flour before. Fairly. There was no flour. We're doing flour, a what? teaspoon. Where did that come? That was not in the I'm sorry, not a teaspoon, a tablespoon. A tablespoon. Flour. But there was no, that wasn't... A third of a cup of heavy cream. The flour was definitely not on the table before when I was looking at all the ingredients. Some fish stock. Yeah, that was there. Some parsley. Yeah, that was there too, but the flour. And some... I don't think you'll be able to get that out. Yeah, I'm going to use this. Some tomato paste. Tomato paste. This is, this is all for the shrimp and the grits. Wait, that, what's that? That's the this shrimp. This is my shrimp. Where did we get that from? Oh, you left one, you left one. You left one. Oh, no. We that got was one in the bowl. You left one in the bowl. Ooh, what was that? That's a little bit of um, Worcestershire sauce and a little bit of. That's not hot sauce. I just put three tablespoons of butter into the grits. They've got about three minutes to go. Ooh, what's so. that? The cheese. Cheese. The cheese. shredded cheddar. Why not, why not Swiss or like? Provolone. Um, Southerners don't use Swiss like in provolone. That's like northern. We should have mentioned that uh, we also cooked these uh, crab thingies, which look really good. They look like they cooked really well. They were already pre-stuffed from the people in Varnum Town, so we're just on them too easy. So there's the uh, grits part. Beautiful rec center. <sighs> Get a look at that bad boy. Woo! Turtle rec center. Where's my car? 31st. It was even one more block than I thought it was. Holy canola. I'm going across the grass. I'm cutting across the grass.